This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, hello and welcome everybody to another video. I hope you're all doing great. Uh, today we're staying local. And when I say local, I mean really local because we're going to be photographing a subject right in my back garden. Now I have photographed this subject before in a video, uh, it was probably a year or two ago. Uh, but th the neat thing is, is that this subject is always changing. And that subject is this arbutus tree that we have uh, growing in our, in our garden. Arbutus trees or madrone trees are native to British Columbia and uh, we just happen to have this one that took root uh, in our garden quite a few years ago now and the neat thing about it is that every year it peels its bark so it makes for a great subject for photography. So what I'd like to do is talk about kind of my process in how I'd go about photographing uh, a close-up subject like the bark on on this tree. Uh, now first off when it comes to lenses for close-up uh, photography of course there are a whole, whole slew of different types of lenses if you happen to own a macro lens like a 100 or a 50 or even a 200 millimeter then you're in luck because the great thing about a macro lens is that you can focus from usually one to one all the way back to infinity so they're just absolutely great lenses to start with for any type of photography uh, when it comes to medium format photography, uh, Fuji do make a macro lens for the GFX100 and the 100S, but I don't own that. So what I've decided to do is use what's called an extension tube. In this case, it's an 18 millimeter, which is quite small. And that just enables me to focus a little bit closer with the lenses that I have. Now, unfortunately, most of the longer focal lengths that Fuji have for the GFX system don't focus that close. So if I do want to do close-ups with these lenses, it is a bit of a problem because even with an extension tube, it, it's not ideal. Uh, a lot of the modern lenses for cameras now you can focus really close with them and in actual fact you, you probably don't even need a macro lens in a lot of cases. Now then when it comes to focal lengths I know there are a lot of shorter focal lengths out there that have macro features or macro lenses but I actually prefer the longer focal lengths and the reason being is that it just gives me that extra working distance from my subject. If you're using say uh, a wide angle lens that can focus really close that's great but you have to get so close to your subject that it doesn't give you an awful lot of room to, to wiggle around or move around. With a longer focal length of course you can back off quite a ways you have a narrower angle of view and it enables you to pick and choose your backgrounds and the subject that you're photographing with without getting impeded by branches or, or things that might be in the way the the problem with the large uh, the longer focal lengths though is that uh, depth of field can be a bit of an issue especially at the 200 millimeter lens uh, range so there are drawbacks to both uh, ways of looking at things so my approach is this I'll often look for compositions without my tripod look for compositions when I find something set up my tripod and then I'll set up my camera and kind of uh, fine-tune my composition so that's what we're gonna do right now all right so let's have a look at this composition here and kind of go through my thought process I'll just turn on the recording here on this camera. Now you have to realize that this is 16 by 9 and not uh, 4 by 3. So um, it, it will be cutting off some of it. Um, so what strikes me right away is I just absolutely love this pattern in here. And that's what we're going for here. This will be cropped. As I said before, I can't get in any closer with the extension tube. If I had a, a macro lens or a lens that uh, focused much closer then I could probably do that without, without a problem but in this case this lens doesn't focus that close. So all in all I really like 
the, the pattern that this swirling pattern is causing. Now, just outside of the frame, as I said, this is a bit narrower, but just over here, there is a bit of an empty space. And there's two ways we can kind of tackle that. We can either just move the camera over to the right a little bit and try and fill that space with some of that peeling bark, or we can burn it in just a little bit to darken it and brighten up some of those areas that surround it to draw attention to those rather than that outer edge. But I think in this case, what I'm going to do is just move my camera over to the right ever so slightly. And then that way, uh, we're, we're able to photograph a little bit more of the right side and kind of shift the whole camera over to the right. So we're filling in that space with a bit of this peeling bark. So let's try that and see uh, how that looks. Okay, so I have moved over and it, it hasn't made a huge difference. And actually this is not the greatest example because, because as I said before, because of 16 by uh, nine, um, it looks a little bit off balance. So you'll just have to kind of take my word for it here. Um, as you can see, we have more pattern on this side now, and I'm trying to fill up this empty space with this peeling bark here. And actually as a 16 by nine, it, it works quite nicely. Now, the only other concern here is if you wanna get everything in sharp focus. So because I'm using a relatively long lens, a one to 200, depth of field, especially with a medium format is gonna be a little bit of an issue. So you have to kind of determine, well, how much of this do you want in sharp focus? Do you want everything to be in sharp focus or does it matter if there's a little bit of fall off? In, in a lot of cases, I don't actually mind if there's a, a little bit of fall off, uh, but I do try to optimum the sharpness as much as possible. So what I would try and do here is you'll notice that uh, the, the tree is leaning over and pretty much everything uh, is flat and it's on the same plane. So the idea is to try to uh, parallel your the back of your camera with the the uh, the plane of focus. So if we go to the side of the camera here and we look at the the lean of the tree and the lean of the camera, if they're both parallel to one another, then Ultimately, you should be able to get everything in sharp focus if you stop down to f11 or f16. Now, there will be a little bit of fall off because it's not a totally plat, uh, flat plane. It has a curve to it. So that's where you have to decide, well, am I going to perhaps stop down even further, which, which is a possibility, but then you start to have a few issues with uh, diffraction. So what we can do in that case, if we really want to get everything in sharp focus, then we could do a bit of focus stacking, which I generally don't bother with unless it's, you know, there's something that's really out of focus and I really want to create that, that depth. So let's check the, the angle of the, uh, the sensor plane to the, to the focus plane. And then once we've figured that out, then we'll take the photograph. Now, of course, this seems like it's taking a long time and I do take my time with my compositions because this tree and, and subjects like this, obviously it's not moving anywhere. So there's, there's no rush for me to move on to the next subject. Now, if, if there was fleeting light, which there, there kind of is because the sun is trying to come around the trees here. And as soon as that sun hits that tree, then I'm gonna have to try and control that light. But other than that, the subject isn't moving. So what's the rush? You know, just take your time look at your composition, figure out what you're doing and, uh, and just move incrementally. And incidentally, that's one of the reasons why I use a geared head is because most of the subjects that I photograph, uh, they're pretty static, they're, they're not moving anywhere. So with a geared head like this or the other ones that I've had in the past, uh, you can really fine tune those compositions. Now, I realize that this type of uh, setup is not for everyone. If you like to rush around and take photographs really quickly and, and take multiple images, or if you're into, uh, say, 
really dramatic situations where you're on the move all the time, then a head like this is probably just going to frustrate you. So you have to kind of determine, well, what kind of photographer are you? And what do you really, you know, how much time do you want to spend on each of these compositions? As you can see now, the, the light is starting to hit this, but it actually looks quite nice. So why don't I quickly uh, try to get my camera parallel and then uh, we'll take a shot with the light as well to, to kind of look at the differences between uh, the composition in the shade and one in bright sunshine. Okay, so this first image here is when the sun first came out and the side lighting is, is quite nice. The only problem with this is that it would have been nice to have the side lighting on the other side where we have all that bark to bring out those textures. As it is now, we're just drawing more attention to the uh, that blank space that I was talking about earlier. Your eye goes straight to that, that blank area and that's not really what I want the viewer to look at. I want people to look at that beautiful knot in the center here. So this is the raw file and then this is the uh, finished image here. So you've noticed I, I, I've had to crop it quite a bit because I just couldn't focus any closer than what I had in the raw file there. Now this next photograph here is same composition more or less. I've cropped it again. Uh, this is the raw file and as you can see the light is quite a bit more even so we're not drawing attention as much to that blank area. Uh, we can manipulate this a little bit in post-processing by brightening up certain areas and also darkening areas so that we're bringing attention to certain areas. So this type of light even though it's not as dramatic and it doesn't bring out the textures it is a, a little bit easier to deal with when photographing close-ups like this. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. One of my favorite features of a Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page either from a desktop computer or while on the fly using the Squarespace app from my mobile device. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and offers the ability to change a design or page quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Want to sell your products? No problem. Setting up shop is also quick and intuitive. Sound interesting? Why not head over to squarespace.com and try it for free? And if you like what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Sorry about the, uh, the light here. So uh, what I've done is I found a, a nice big piece of cardboard uh, that was lying in the garden. That's the funny thing about our garden. The front of the garden, which Karen looks after, um, is really nice and tidy and she's done a really great job. Uh, the back garden, well, that's my section and, uh, well, I'm a bit embarrassed to show it because it, it almost looks like just a, a wilderness area. <laughs> but uh, the advantage is, is that there's some junk lying around that I can use to, to, uh, for my photography. So I found this massive piece of cardboard that uh, uh, I can kind of prop up with a tripod to just add some shade to this area. But, of course, by doing that, we don't have any light on the area so now we need to reflect some light back into that spot so i found a piece of polystyrene here and i'm just going to use that as a reflector so what i'll do is i'll take one image without the reflector and then one image with so you can kind of see the difference that's the great thing uh, you know if you work in a studio that's why people like to work in studios because they can really con control the light if you're outside, then obviously it's a little harder to do unless you're doing small scenes like this. Now, I mean, obviously it's really easy to do when I'm in my garden, but when you're out in the field, carrying all this extra stuff can be a bit of a problem unless you're uh, just set to go and do close-ups and you can carry a small reflector with you. Uh, you have your macro lens and you can use your own shadow to cast on, on small areas. 
as in this case I probably could use my own shadow but it's just easier if you can find something to put shade on your subject. Okay so as you can see in this photograph it's very similar to one of the first ones that I took in that with this flat lighting uh, again you're you're bringing out all of those details so it does give you an, an opportunity to uh, play around with the image a little bit and brighten areas and darken areas but it is nice if you have some kind of natural light at the time either by reflecting light with your own scrim or with sunlight or, or whatever it happens to be so this is a raw file and i didn't bother to um, to process this one because as i said it's very similar to one of the earlier ones now wh what i've done in this one is i've actually taken that uh, white piece of polystyrene and reflected light into the scene and you'll notice that now all of a sudden we're reflecting light from the right side which is what i wanted in the first place you may recall the very first image with the uh, the sunlit sunlight it was really uh, highlighting that kind of blank area that I didn't like so much. Well, now we're bringing the light in from the right side and it's bringing out all, all of those lovely textures. So as I've said many times, it, it's much easier to uh, make your images in camera and try and get everything right in camera rather than trying to process it afterwards especially if if you're not really into processing that much then try to do as much in camera as possible and this is one way to control light especially with smaller scenes this is the raw file here and again i had to crop it quite a bit and i have manipulated it i've done quite a bit of uh dodging in the center there to bring out that beautiful knot and uh, I've also added contrast. But uh, I think most of you will agree that as soon as we add a little bit of light in there, then it can really elevate your photography without having to do much in post-processing. So here are a few other images that I took of the, of the Arbutus tree. And uh, again, I've used uh, a reflector to reflect a little bit of light into the scene. All right, folks, well, thank you ever so much for watching this video. I hope you've got some tips out of this. Uh, I really appreciate you following along. If you enjoy the content of my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's really helpful. And lastly, uh, if you'd like to support my channel in other ways, I do have a number of items, including woolly hats, uh, baseball caps, books, calendars, uh, all on my website for sale, uh, which helps my channel immensely. So thanks again for watching and until next time, bye for now.